The Energy Information Administration estimates the United States could be a net exporter of energy by next year. One of the government organizations helping to make that happen is the U.S. Trade and Development Agency. Tom Hardy's the acting director of the USTDA. Tom, thanks for coming on the program. I want to talk about that energy program later in our conversation if we have time. But what's the mission of USTDA? Sure. The mission of USTDA is simple. Helping U.S. companies export their goods and services into emerging markets, the fastest growing markets in the world. But doing it in a way that helps our partners overseas make informed investment decisions on where they're going to invest their limited money to build out their ener energy infrastructure, mm -hmm. transportation, ICT infrastructure. And we're pretty good at it. Over the last 10 years, for every dollar we've invested in our programs, we've generated over $104 in U.S. exports. Mm -hmm. And through that early investment analysis, feasibility studies, technical assistance, pilot projects that are helping countries make the investment decisions they need to help uh, support their long-term economic growth. I note the word development in the name of your organization. What's the interaction and integration with an organization like, say, USAID, who also does development? And where do you differentiate yourselves from other organizations that are involved in development around the world? Great question. USTDA was actually taken out of USAID. Congress wanted to transform the traditional model of foreign assistance that put U.S. interests on equal footing as our partners overseas. So by investing in the early project preparation to get projects from concept idea to implementation, we want to do it in a way that introduces U.S. technologies, goods, and services that are manufactured right here in the United States to make sure that our partners overseas get the quality infrastructure pro projects they want to invest in. You've got two main strategic goals in the strategic plan that's on your website, and I'd like to get a thumbnail on each one. The first is creating jobs in the United States by supporting exports for development projects in emerging economies. You've touched on that one already, but how do you go about doing that specifically, and how do you identify the places that are a good fit with the mission of your organization? Great question. I think the best thing to do is maybe use an example mm -hmm. because I think it goes to the heart of what we do and it's our staff works tirelessly to find the right partners overseas and match those partners with innovative technologies and solutions. In Port Harcourt, Nigeria, southern Nigeria, the infra energy infrastructure is weak. They have continual blackouts. Our partners, a dis uh, distribution company in Port, Port Harcourt, came to USTDA and wanted to invest in innovative U.S. technologies to help them better provide energy to their con consumers. A company right here in the Washington, D.C. area that manufactures smart meters partnered with the distribution company in Port Harcourt to demonstrate their technology in the Nigerian market. That work has resulted in the distribution company now ordering 100,000 smart meters that are going to be produced and manufactured here in the United States to be exported to Nigeria. What that's meant for the Nigerians is that they have greater energy access, consumers are happier, and uh, they're, they've got uh, higher levels of energy usage across mm -hmm. the region. So you've got a win-win for all the people that are involved with this. The other strategic goal is fostering opportunities for small businesses in U.S. TDA programs. That sounds like almost a 1A strategic sure. goal rather than a number two. Is that a fair read? I, I think that's absolutely right. And the company I'm referring to, Spark, Spark Meter, mm -hmm. it's a local small business here. And by using the work that our staff did overseas to identify this opportunity and match it with a U.S. company that had the technology and knowledge to m meet their needs, we've been able to help this small business now export its technology, its smart meters, mm -hmm. into the Nigerian market. And that's just the first step. This is a long-term commercial investment that the Nigerians are investing in themselves, and we just help to facilitate to make that happen. I imagine that you don't have any shortage of need around the world I imagine that one of the big challenges is identifying the technology that will suit the needs that people are asking you to help them with in different parts of the world. How do you find and recruit the people who may not have done business with the government before or may not even know that doing business with the government is an, is an option for what they have to offer and let them know how you can help them? Sure. As, as a small agency, we depend on the Department of State, the embassies around the world, the U.S. Foreign Commercial Service to be our eyes and ears on the ground, mm -hmm. to identify those projects that are they are ready to, companies and uh, governments are ready to make the investment decisions. And we 
take our program tools, whether again, feasibility studies, pilot projects, but also one thing I didn't talk, touch on was reverse trade missions, mm -hmm. where we know that companies and public sector entities are about ready to make investment decisions, we'll actually bring them on the U.S. government's dime, on taxpayers' dime to the United States, introduce them to U.S. technology solutions, bring them to the manufacturing sites, but bring them also to um, places of operation so they can talk to the plant manager to understand why they took the went with the U.S. solution, what the benefit of the U.S. technology has been for them so they can make an informed investment decision as they invest in their infrastructure growth. There are several components underneath those two strategic goals. We don't have time to talk about them all, but a couple are uh, delivering on the President's Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, the Global Procurement Initiative. You've talked about Power Africa. Um, the one I want to ask you about in the time that we have left is the U.S. Gas Exports Infrastructure Initiative. I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, we're very close as a country to becoming a net exporter of energy. What What's been your organization's role in that? Sure. The uh, energy markets globally have been transformed in large measure because of what's happening here in the United States. And what we know is that the U.S. is beginning to be a significant exporter and transforming the global gas market. But what we also know is in order for the United States to sell its gas around the world, we need to have customers overseas that can buy it. Mm -hmm. And that requires countries both public sector and private sector to invest in the infrastructure to bring that gas on shore, pipeline it to gas power plants and build the gas power plants. And that is the compendium of work we're doing is looking at the whole gas value chain to make sure customers in emerging markets can utilize our gas. In Lithuania is a great example for for a long time, they were dependent upon Gazprom, Russia's uh, monopolistic pricing. And Lithuania came to us and said, we want to break away, provide greater energy security for the Lithuanians. Using USTDA's feasibility study, we were able to demonstrate and provide them a roadmap to invest in an LNG importation terminal. Today, they have that terminal up in operation. It's now importing gas from around the world, but it's also today importing gas from the United States that are, is now being exported as a result of the transformation taking place in the uh, U.S. energy market. Tom Hardy, thanks very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Francis.